everybody. Welcome to the Stark Museum of Art. My name is Lauren and I'm standing here in the lobby of the museum surrounded by beautiful art. Today we're going to look at a bronze sculpture outside in front of the museum. We'll talk about the different factors that affect the sculpture and how to preserve it. Then we'll do a fun experiment in the studio involving pennies. So let's get started. Follow me and we'll head outside. This sculpture is called The Invocation. The artist's name is Buck McCain and the sculpture was cast in 2003. We know that this sculpture is made of bronze, but what exactly is bronze? Bronze is a metal alloy of copper and tin. An alloy is a metal made by combining two or more metallic elements. So by combining the elements copper and tin, we get a stronger metal called bronze. Bronze is often used to create sculptures because of its strength and durability. It's a rich brown color. However, you probably noticed that the sculpture, the invocation, is not only brown. There are places on the sculpture where the copper in the bronze has reacted to the environment around it, causing the bronze to form what's called a patina. The patina is a thin layer, blue-green in color, and develops and grows over time. Patinas can be influenced by temperature, humidity, distance to the ocean, and air pollution. Think about where we live. Southeast Texas is very hot and humid. We are also close to the ocean, only about 25 miles away. Bronze sculptures here in Southeast Texas tend to patina more rapidly than they would in a drier, cooler, and more inland place. Preserving sculptures such as the Invocation requires great knowledge and time. Conservators document the work with photography before doing anything to conduct a full assessment. A first cleaning is done to remove loose debris on the surface. Then the sculpture is cleaned with a low to medium pressure water spray. It's also sponge cleaned with a special conservation soap. Once cleaned, wax is applied to the sculpture. Very carefully, the surface of the sculpture is heated to remove moisture. This allows the liquid wax to be added. After the wax cools, the sculpture is buffed with a clean, soft cloth on smooth areas and brushes on textured areas such as the horse's mane. The wax provides a shield between the bronze and the environment. Interestingly, when this sculpture, the invocation, was treated in 2014, the corrosion was not removed. When I say corrosion, I'm talking about that green colored patina. The artist, Buck McCain, wanted his sculpture to show age over time. He made the artistic choice to allow the bronze of his sculpture to patina and not have it removed. Think of the Statue of Liberty. You picture its recognizable green color, right? However, at one time it was bronze colored. It was built in 1924, so it's almost 100 years old. Over the years, it has fully patinated and is now the green we know today. Letting bronze sculptures patina can be both an artistic choice and a practical choice. Since Buck McCain wants his sculpture to age over time, wax will most likely not be applied since it delays the natural patination process. Therefore, the conservator will probably just clean any residue, such as bird droppings, off of the sculpture. Now it's time to see patination in action. So let's head to the studio and conduct a scientific experiment with pennies, salt, and vinegar. Let's go. Welcome to the studio at the Stark Museum of Art. Today, we're going to turn a penny green. Did you see a bronze sculpture that's slowly turning green? We're gonna do the same thing, but much faster. Remember that bronze contains copper, and guess what pennies have in them? Copper. So, let's get started. You will need salt, vinegar, a paper plate, a paper towel, and a penny. So first, let's set our paper towel on our paper plate. Then we're gonna take some of our vinegar, only some, maybe about a third of this little cup, and dampen our paper towel. See how I hardly used anything at all. And then I'm gonna set my penny right in the middle of that damp spot, open my salt, and sprinkle about half the packet on top of the penny and around it. And I still have about half a packet left here. And now is the fun part. We wait. 
So why, did, why is the penny going to turn green? Well, the vinegar and the salt dissolve the top dirty layer of the penny, exposing the copper in the penny. Then the copper mixes with the oxygen in the air and the chlorine in the salt, causing an oxidation process. Now, oxidation is just a fancy word for a chemical reaction involving oxygen. As the penny dries and it's exposed to air, malachite develops. And we're going to see this malachite in a little while. It's a blue-green substance. That's us turning the penny green. Now, newer pennies are made with less copper, so you might not get the same result as your neighbor. Less copper means less of a chemical reaction. So what makes pennies turn green in everyday life? Pennies are typically dirty. Newer ones are really shiny. You can really see that copper color. But every once in a while, you might come across a penny with some green on it. Now, these pennies probably weren't experimented on like we're doing now, but they're exposed to the elements of everyday life. We have acids in our hands that come from food, weather, all kinds of things that can do this process over a long period of time to a penny, just like the bronze sculpture outside is turning green slowly over time. So it's been about 15 to 20 minutes. My paper towel is getting a little bit dry, so I'm going to add more vinegar. Now don't pour it directly over the penny, but just around the penny. And now I'm going to sprinkle more salt on top and around the penny. And we wait some more. I've been experimenting with pennies for about a month now, so let's look at pennies at various stages in the experimentation process. So this penny right here has been going for a couple days now, and it has a little bit of green on it. The back side is really turning green in a really cool way because there's no salt on it. These pennies have been going for about a week now, a little more, and you, they are really turning green. You can really see that blue-green malachite on there. The front side has blue-green salt, and the back side, the penny is turning blue-green. Same with this one. And now this penny, I started a month ago, and it has really turned this beautiful light blue color that malachite is losing some of the green and going full blue, and the whole penny is almost blue. Now what I noticed is that no two pennies are the same. So they all reacted at different speeds, and there's different amounts of malachite on them, which I think is really interesting. Pretty cool stuff. Now you might have to add more vinegar to your penny throughout the day and even throughout the week, and continue adding salt and remember, just a little at a time, and your penny will get more and more malachite on it. I hope you have a really successful experiment, and it's fun to look at how art and science can interact. So thanks for stopping in at the Stark Museum of Art virtually, and we hope to see you again soon. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.